Our gospel lesson today is from the 17th chapter of John, John 17, verses 20 through 26. Jesus said, I do not pray for these only, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The glory which thou hast given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, even as thou hast loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom thou hast given me may be with me where I am, to behold my glory, which thou hast given me in thy love for me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these know that thou hast sent me. I made known to them thy name, and I will make it known that the love which thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. May the Lord bless this reading of the scripture to our hearing and understanding and the living of our faith. Would you bow your heads? Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The first Christian church in Woodward is right across the street from the First Presbyterian Church. While I was serving First Christian in Woodward, the Presbyterian Church called a new minister named Brent. Brent and I developed a close friendship in the ensuing months that he served at First Pres. When Brent needed to be gone on a Sunday, I would fill the pulpit for him. I share this story to explain the unusual nature of today's sermon. Last week, a member of First Christian Church in Ponca City called to ask if I could share a recording of this Sunday's sermon that they could use as part of their virtual worship this Sunday. The church in Ponca is also in an interim period similar to ours in Tulsa. And the preacher who was scheduled to preach this Sunday had called saying he would not be able to be present today so they needed someone to fill in for the fill-in. So I am preaching today's sermon to two congregations, one in Tulsa and one in Ponca City. If you are worried about the sermon being twice as long as it would normally be, I assure you that will not be the case. Also, although I have preached to two different congregations, as I did in Woodward, this is the first time I have preached simultaneously to two different congregations. So please bear with me as I try to navigate these uncharted waters. At least both congregations are disciple congregations, unlike the situation in Woodward. The first Sunday I preached at the Presbyterian Church, I could not help but notice the clock located above the doors that led from the sanctuary to the entrance area of the church. It seemed to be a not so subtle reminder for whoever was preaching to be sure to finish the sermon in time for the Presbyterians to be able to get to their favorite restaurant before the Methodists and Baptists and members of the church across the street. In order to promote a sense of unity among the churches in Woodward, the next time I preached at First Pres, I had a roll of scotch tape in my suit pocket. I retrieved a paper towel from the restroom and taped it over the face of the clock. I assure you with tongue firmly in cheek that my actions were meant to promote a sense of unity among the churches in Woodward and not to poke fun at a certain crotchety Presbyterian elder who had made life miserable for my friend Brent. It was exactly to promote unity in the church that Jesus prayed the words we heard in our gospel reading from John 17. I pray that they may be one, even as thou, Father, art in me 
and I in thee. Sadly, the church of today, and by church, I mean the church, the church is the body of Christ, has acted in such a manner that it is anything but one body. I have shared with some of you before Richard Niebuhr's words, denominations are the church's concession of defeat to the world. In other words, the church is saying to the world, we're just the same as you. We can't get along with each other, so we gather across the street from each other, saying indirectly that what divides us is more important than what unites us. Jesus didn't pray for unity in the church so we could get together and hold hands and sing Kumbaya. Jesus prayed for the unity of the church so we could more effectively witness God's love for the world. This surely includes the various things we do to cooperate with other churches in the area of outreach. But even more important, that we might never lose sight of the church's primary mission, to share the one thing that the church offers that is unique to the church, that is Jesus Christ and the saving relationship with him. In this regard, consider the following question. How long has it been since you have shared your faith with someone who has not confessed Christ as Lord? To put it another way, how long has it been since you've invited someone to attend worship with you? The greatest challenge for most churches is to always make evangelism the sharing of the good news of life in Christ, the church's number one priority. This is not an easy time to be church. By being church, I mean being the church Christ intends us to be. Aging congregations, aging buildings, dwindling finances, and dwindling commitment to the church's primary mission are all common churches, challenges for many churches. My brother serves as a trustee for the Methodist church he and his wife attend. Evidently, in the Methodist church, the trustees take a more active role than is the case in most disciples' churches. Nearly every decision that is made in the various committees of the church must be approved by the trustees. My brother told me that last week the trustees voted to support the stewardship committee's plan to cut almost $100,000 from the previous year's budget. The trustees also voted to use money from some of the church's memorial funds to make needed repairs to the building. It's not easy to be church. Although it's not easy to be church, we are living in a culture that is in desperate need of what the church offers. At a time when there is disagreement over what seem to be basic facts about the challenges we face, the COVID pandemic, systemic racism, crumbling infrastructure, and partisan politics, our culture needs the honesty that is offered by the church. When we hear about acts of violence aimed towards certain racial groups and someone says, this isn't who we are, the church needs to say, yes, it is who we are, and we need to do those things that are necessary to bring an end to this violence. When a violent mob attacks our capital, the church needs to say, this is not a Republican or Democrat issue. This is an issue that must be addressed by all Americans and all Americans of good conscience must condemn this violence as a threat to the very existence of our country. It's not an easy time to be church. But hear this good news. In our gospel lesson today, we read that Jesus prayed not only for those who were following him during the time of his earthly ministry, but also for those who believe in him through their word. In other words, Jesus prayed for us, the ones who believe because of the faith passed on to us, by our parents and grandparents, 
and every other generation of faithful Christians who have gone before us. C.S. Lewis said, I believe in Christianity as I believe the sun has risen, not because I can see it, but because I see everything else. I believe what Lewis is saying is that with all of its faults, what the church offers is far better than anything else offered by the world. It seems to me that one of the most difficult challenges facing the church is to remain faithful, even at a time when it's not easy to be church. This might include being open to new ways of being church. Hear these prophetic words. Maybe the best thing that could happen to the church would be for some great tidal wave of history to wash it all away. The church buildings tumbling, the church money all lost, the church bulletins blowing through the air like dead leaves, the differences between preachers and congregations and among churches themselves all lost too. Then all we would have left would be each other and Christ, which was all there was in the first place. It's not easy to be church, but maybe this will help. I believe that Jesus not only prayed for us, but also that he still prays for us today. Somewhere in heaven, or maybe even somewhere in the midst of our own lives, Jesus knelt and prayed for us today. His prayer might have been something like this. Father, thank you for calling the members of First Christian Church Tulsa and First Christian Church Ponca City to be part of my body. Challenge them to be the people of faith you have called them to be. Inspire them to love each other even as I love them. Forgive them when they are too timid and afraid to do what is just. Open them to your will and to the leading of your spirit. Bless them so that they might be a blessing for others. Give them faith to know that you are with them now and forevermore. Amen.